Hello, I'm Grant Meyer, General Manager and VP of the Orange Group of Companies. Our team has created two shade taking videos to guide your team in taking accurate shades right in your own office. Our first video is a condensed four minute instructional video that the highlights of the process. You can find the link to the video in the description below. The second video, the one you're about to watch, is a comprehensive description video presented by I.M. Farr, one of our comprehensive aesthetic technicians. In this video, there are several key points to consider when taking shades. Firstly, be sure to take the shade prior to anesthetizing the patient. This is critically important because dehydration of the tooth makes the tooth lighter. Sending the patient to the lab is not more predictable. The process still requires three appointments for single centrals or single anteriors. Not surprisingly, we've been asked by patients, why couldn't the doctor do this? Why well, do I have to come here for you to take the shade? We created these videos to give you the tools to be able to take the shades in your own office to make the shade taking process as simple as possible. The key in your communication to us is proper dental photography, as illustrated in both videos. There are three key factors to understanding shade. as value, hue, and chroma. Value being the brightness of the darkness, hue being the color, and chroma being the intensity of that color. This video will give you an in-depth explanation of how we use proper dental photography and videos to determine the shade. As a result of providing these shade-taking assets and instructions to our customers, across North America, we've seen a 50% increase in single unit anterior restorations. Not what I wanted, just what we received. But with a considerable improvement in predictability, achieving successful crown placement and three appointments or less. One key point in this video is specifically the second patient. It's an implant retained crown. We never saw the doctor and we never saw the patient. Everything was communicated via photography and video. Feel free to contact us with any questions you may have. Thank you and enjoy. I'd like in this preliminary record to share some thoughts about single central cases. Uh, from here, from my messy bench, the right and wrong about shade taking single central cases. As you all know, rarely the first attempt at matching a natural central is a success. A high percentage of single central crowns are not cemented in the first appointment. Rather, the session is used to try in the crown to provide more shade information to the ceramist, to the lab technician, to enable him to alter the final crown and get it ready to the second session. In, in few examples here, uh, I'll tackle some cases and shed some light on the right and wrong in shade taking. All uh, the images and the clips you'll see during this record have been taken by doctors using a smartphone, not professional SLR uh, camera. We're starting with this case. Let's view together those images and try to analyze the shade taking process. Obviously, this is a root canal treated number uh, 21 crown. So we received three pictures, two with shade tabs, uh, as you see here. One is under light exposure, okay? And the other one is overexposed to light. And this is not the problem, but uh, the problem is two major things. First is the angle of holding the phone while taking the pictures, uh, spe specifically this picture. Second, the position of holding the shade tabs. So as you all know, uh, pictures uh, pictures usually should be, uh, should be taken from the front, not in a diagonal way. Camera lens is almost perpendicular on the cervical third, let me show you this here on the cervical third of the ins of the uh, facial surface of the centrals the shade tab is held edge to edge with the uh, uh, with it edge to edge in the same plane with the facial surface of the two centrals not behind or ahead of it for the light to hit both the exact same way so uh, but uh, also, obviously, here the stump is not just discolored, but uh, gray, 
okay uh, what adds like a, even more challenge to uh, pulling off the case and unfortunately sometimes if we don't have good pictures we 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 must trust the doctor's opinion about the shade right because we're we're left with no option but to follow that shade uh, even sometimes if our analysis does not meet the uh, doctor selection of the shade tab but we still left with no option but to follow that and that's what ha what exactly happened in this case the doctor indicated that 1m1 is the right shade selection so uh, I considered 1m1 as my major reference and I followed it this case so let's see together how uh, like the final results uh, ended up here so I did the crown to match 1M1. Of course, taking into consideration the influence of the stump shade as well, the prep shade. Okay, so see the try-in here. It's exactly 1M1 after being seeded, after being tried in with the with the glycerin gel. So we did exactly what the doctor asked for. So we have a perfect matching with 1M1, but the shade does not match with the adjacent tooth number 11 what brings a big question mark that the shade was taken in the first place is wrong selection is a wrong selection and what it and it happens actually i'm not underestimating the process of shade taking it's very challenging but the communication by using the right photography is the really the ultimate solution to correct uh, this uh, and uh, trying to pull this off so uh, what I did here, I'll walk you through the communication with the doctor. The doctor already tried in this and uh, this crown and sent the patient home and she sent me a bunch of photos. None of them uh, really was useful to be used to alter or create a new crown. So I asked her to kindly call the patient and uh, uh, book him for another try in and follow the video that I will send her like I I took a video for her simple one and I asked her to follow the video seat first feet seat the crown put SR gel like a glycerin gel make sure that there's no air trapped between between the crown and the stump just to make sure that the influence of the, the stump of the prep is being transferred properly and uh, take a video similar to the one that uh, I I sent her. Actually, and I'll share this video with you. So take a watch. Hey, doctor. So this is the video I'm going to be sending uh, to your phone. Just make sure that your the way you're holding the phone is uh, or your camera lens is is uh, like a perpendicular to the like labial surface of the tooth. It's not like from here or from there. It Kind of like a, like ask the patient to uh, to tip the chin down a little bit and and go this close please this close till you uh, you make sure like you are in focus okay once you get out of focus you just pull back a little bit and 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 uh, pick up please the one uh, M1 shade tab and put it uh, edge to edge with the uh, Two centrals. Thank you. So that was the video, and uh, she did actually. I appreciate that she uh, was very much cooperative, and she responded, and she exactly for followed my lead here. And I'll show you the next step. So uh, this is the video she sent me. So uh, take a watch. Okay, move it to the adjacent tooth. So I want to show you really the uh, first of all the video was too blurry it wasn't clear to uh, obviously it's it's she's still trying to match with 1M1 uh so it, it, meaning like she probably seen something in the in the naked eye that we're not seeing in the video number 1 uh number 2 I can see like a, a beside that the video is not clear uh, I can see that there's a uh, like a under light exposure, a, a frame 
uh, like it's coming from somewhere. So it's either my, uh, I notice here right away that the lip, the lips are not retracted and the finger is uh, is just trying to hold one of the lips and that could be both of them like the blue glove or the the shadow being casted from the uh, lip uh, both of them causing a shadow or uh, an un unnormal light uh, condition that will eventually confuse us if we're gonna rely on this video so what i ask her to do because uh, I, when, when I asked her uh, uh, actually to bring the patient, to bring the patient again for another try, and I told her, please send me the videos back. Do not let the patient go before I make sure that this is the material I want, okay? So send me the video, and I'll I'll make the judgment, and we'll go from there, okay? We, because I'm, I might still need to ask you to take, like, a, 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 another video or another, uh, uh, like, a still shot, and... Uh, and I was expecting this scenario. So uh, I, what I asked her to do is to, first of all, to retract okay. the lips, because uh, uh, again, the lips too. and the, the nurse hand or blue gloves are ca hand. casting a shadow onto the surface. And second, use a brighter shade tab than 1M1, brighter than M 1M1. And she asked me like, like such as what and i i told her like let's go step by step let's go with the, to assess the brightness the value because you know like there's three uh, different dimensions for every shade and the most important is the brightness the scale of white gray okay what we call in the lab a, a the value of the shade okay so I told her, please go with 0M3 and 0M1, the brighter two shade uh, tabs in, in a one degree brighter than 1M1. And uh, note the difference now between the two videos. So then she sent me this one with the lips retracted and with a different shade. It's still, still a little bit blurry, but see the difference from the first video. She's still taken using the same phone, the same light condition, the same everything. Okay. And let's look at OM2 now. And this is OM2. Thank you. Let's get the, the crown. And I also asked her to, like, to take off the crown because I need to make sure that the stump shade did not change. As you see, like it's, it's very, very grayish. Maybe it got like even a little bit more uh, like gray than the like the point where we started with the case. Uh, and um, uh, the our my main problem still like I got better, better material to uh, like to rely on for the adjustment, but still the video is too blurry. Something wrong. While I'm I'm taking you through all these details because it's very important. I can't work with with this video. I mean the second one is better than the first one. Uh, kind of like a uh, like a giving me an idea about what brightness I need to go with the brightness but I'm still missing some other aspects of the shade. And uh, well, I figured there's something wrong between her phone, like the, the uh, Google phone she's using and the, where, where I'm viewing the video on, uh, uh, on my iPhone. So uh, then I uh, asked her to, uh, to send me a, a just photo, like still photo, they just take a simple photo of the iPhone and send it. Uh, that will also add value to the uh, like to the uh, like the collection of pictures and videos I uh, I got from her. So let's see what happened next. So she did take these uh, still pictures and she sent them to me. And of course, she asked me like, what shade tabs I'm gonna go with? Uh, edge to edge, same uh, uh, plane. And uh, I uh, I said like let's do zero M two let's do zero M three and let's do again one M one and let's do zero M one and she sent she sent me ac actually a very good quality uh, pictures again taking by just a smartphone and um, 
But the thing, but it's, she 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 called me wondering why. Um, she said like I sent you what you want, but it still doesn't make sense to me. So uh, why would you go brighter shades? Uh, it, obviously, they're brighter than number eleven. Brighter than the shade with the natural uh, tooth number eleven. And what I tried to explain to her that I'm I'm taking the value of the shade, which is very important. I'm taking the 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 amount of white ingredients inside this color equation. Okay, and that's again not a simple thing to process uh, if you uh, like you're not deep in uh, the color, uh, not in knowledge about the uh, color. Uh, and uh, how to take the shade, but uh, but she is so she uh, like after I explained to her, uh, she kind of like understood, and I told her like I I don't care for now what the yellowish color like the the chroma which is called the chroma, because the yellowish is something I can create on the surface of the tooth. But the value, like the amount of yellow, the white, is something comes from built inside the material. So if I uh, really uh, pull that off, like the amount of white uh, uh, amount, uh, it, I'll I'll be fine with adding the chroma, the yellowish, uh, on top, like the way I want to, as long as I have the correct value, if that make uh, sense. And also, I'll show you what what comes next here. Then my way of analyzing these photos. I mean, it's not it's not really necessary for you like to see that, but uh, also it, it kind of like a, um, giving you an idea about how important taking multiple pictures. But it, when you see what I do and the way I analyze the shade here. Uh, you'll uh, you'll understand the importance of taking multiple photos with the multiple shade tabs. So I uh, went back to my bench. I put all these photos on uh, uh, using my my computer on one uh, slide PowerPoint slide to gather uh, all the photos in one frame to analyze the shade. Okay, it's it's not easy to eyeball a shade match. So uh, we better figure out a way to do that. And the way is what I'm showing you here. I crop the shade tab in every image. Okay, so in every image, I crop the image to get just the shade tab. Uh, and I would make sure I, well, like when I crop it, I use uh, the Dunton area of the tab, uh, and not the incisal area, the Dunton. Try to, to, to crop every image to the same, almost the same uh, zone. And, um, uh, I would move all those cropped uh, four shade tabs and I would put them over uh, tooth number 11, the natural, uh, the natural uh, tooth number 11. So now they're ready. So I put four of them. I'm just zooming in to show you um, like how they look. And I, and I start to uh, like uh, group like the four samples all together and and I would move them left and right on top like over the picture of the natural tooth okay and I see which one of them disappears which one of them bl like blend with the background of the natural tooth color so the one that blends with the background meaning that's the shade tab that matches the value of the natural tooth okay so as you saw like one of them was a little bit more uh, a little bit more yellowish did not match one of them was like too white so uh, it, it was like brighter than the uh, natural tooth and uh, uh, one was the closest and that was uh, our value selection. That's what I uh, considered as my brightness level to create the crown. Allow me to show you this like zoomed in one more time because it's, uh, it's very important like what I did here. Um, so 
you see this is uh, we start with the first one was 1m1 this is 0m2 this is uh, 0m1 and this is 0m3 okay so you see like here's the blend between 0m2 and the background this and here we have a probably on 0m3 like this is 0 this is 0m3 okay and this is 0m1 this is a 0m2 and this is the right the far right is 1m1 so 0m3 was too bright and 0m2 was the perfect to me because it did again it, it at a certain second it disappears so it, it it blends in perfectly that's my value my value is the 0m2 and not the 1m1 what she what the doctor has uh, selected in the first place so that's my analysis and based on that i uh, like proceeded uh, to consider 0m2 is my uh, shade match for the brightness so i remade a new crown to match uh, 0m2 and that way you see here um, this is 0m2 shade tab and this is my new crown and this is the uh, old 1m1 crown <clears throat> so still having the, our old 1m1 crown in front of in front of us and looking at it actually and comparing it to the new crown is extremely important to f to figure out how higher i should bring up the uh, brightness okay so you see here the match in brightness and uh, i still added a little bit of yellowish based on this image here okay because it is matching with the brightness but a little bit of uh, the chroma of 1m1 maybe and that's what uh, exactly confused the doctor between the chroma and the value uh, i guess uh, but to me another uh, very useful tool to assess the uh, the the match and make sure that the the match is there with the influence of the the stump shade because you probably not seeing that you can't see in the image hard to see in this image there's a stump the natural dye material from the back which is nd9 i use the like the darkest here to mimic like the the grayish of the uh, natural prep natural stump the gray one we don't have like an exact same gray uh, in this uh, composite material we use to mimic the stump so i use the darkest instead which is nd9 and you see the matching is still there because i managed the masking on the like in the on the inner side of the crown and i created the shade on the on in the during like within the layers then the layer diagram of the build up, built up and the chroma on the surface so uh, and uh, i took this picture under uh, Oh, using the polarization uh, filter i mean it's not it's not very important information to know uh, but uh, again since i uh, i'm like showing you all the details so you're aware of what we uh, do like every every step of the way here on the bench as well as uh, with the communicating with the doctor so i'm uh, uh, just giving you an idea about like my final uh, it, it, it check my final uh, shade match che check which is taking a picture under uh, this filter where these reflection the reflections you see here this is what you see from the flash the twin flash or the ring flash the 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 direct flash front uh, you all these glare and reflection is eliminated uh, when you take a picture under uh, like a, a a polarization filter so uh, and you still see the match here uh, the, the case uh, like uh, like hasn't been sent back because we're in the christmas holiday but i'm pretty confident that the match will be way better than the our first attempt and it will be like even more than 90 percent so i'm looking forward to see the result uh but i will move ahead to another case where I where the final results are already there so I can share that with you as well actually the whole concept of this video has come up on the occasion of this particular case because we all agreed here that this is a challenging case the reason why because like according to the doctor uh, 
uh, he tried sending this case to multiple labs and this is the best results he got okay the results you see here uh, so this is the crown okay this is the crown and this is the natural tooth here uh, but so he sent the case to multiple uh, labs and he think that like, the results are reasonable but the patient still not happy they're seeing something that we don't see we we couldn't see actually we can't see the pictures but the patient uh, is not quite happy here and uh, you probably agree with me that this is this is not a bad match at all actually I uh, I, I loved how the doctor has taken the shade here uh, he like the, the way how he placed the shade uh, tab uh, edge to edge on the same plane and in the three pictures the three shade taking pictures the a1 b1 and c1 uh like three of them are taken from the same angle so that would gives me like more credibility to really rely on those pictures or to compare one with the uh with the other uh, so what i did here with this with with uh, analyzing those photos uh, i i did uh, i did the exact same what i did with the prior case uh, and i figured two things uh, because you know usually like we need to to spot the list of wrongdoing that caused the mismatch then the why so we figure out the what's like what went wrong and and why and how to what what to do better to solve them how to uh, resolve this uh, shade issue so uh, first the first first like on on list of wrongdoing um first the appearance of the crown has a problem so if you look closely between these two um do I mean by the appearance is the plastic appearance of the ceramic so here it's a it looks like a very plasticky and this is coming from the the, the monolithic factor like uh, like the fact that it doesn't have any uh, ceramic layering uh, on it and mostly for single sulfide cases it's very difficult to do monolithic is I mean if you if you get a good matching with monolithic crown uh, you'll be uh, lucky okay but the second reason uh, why there's a mismatch is the brightness uh, level again uh, that probably like 90 percent of the the problems in in single central cases shade mismatch is the degree of value the mismatch in the level of value so uh, lower brightness lower brightness than the uh, selected uh, tabs uh, so I figured that in the remake, I have to bring up the value more than A1 because here we have A1, B1, and C1, and the brightest here is B1. Sorry, so brighter than B1. And on our shade uh, guide, brighter than A1 would be like bleach range, the bleach range. Uh, and uh, so this is one thing I have to go brighter in the uh, value dimension of color and I have to cover the facial surface of the crown with a layer of ceramic powder to give this ceramic look and get up get rid of the plastic appearance uh, the, the ceramic will always uh, give uh, like better light scattering and will be way closer to the uh, the nature of the uh, natural uh, enamel so the single central crown is done and uh, we send it uh, to the doctor for a try-in and I was very clear with the doctor that please don't again don't leave the don't let the patient go before you share the photos with me because I might need to ask you like for more and he sent me this picture so I kind of like a uh, was uh, relieved and uh, the, like we have almost like a perfect matching here the the appearance looks more of a natural looking more matching to the like a natural uh, enamel and natural dentition uh, and the brightness is uh, probably like 98 percent there it can still take a little bit of a boost especially around the margin area uh, so and he shared this video with me i'll show you the video at the end uh, 
with the video, uh, I made sure that, uh, like we, we nailed it and patient is super happy. And, um, when he sent me the case back to cement the parts, uh, because it's an implant case screw retained, so we, we have to uh, like finish the case by cementing the hybrid crown on the tie base. So I was I, I was looking at the picture and I thought like I still can like increase those like a, a little bit of brightness. So why not? So I increase this uh, uh, two to three percent of brightness. And I know even like the final uh, uh, insertion. Uh, the pictures like post insertion will look even better than this uh, but I want to I would like to end up this video with this uh, with this this record with this uh, video of uh, this uh, uh, almost perfect match and which uh, really show us that the coming the correct communication between lab technician and dentist is very powerful and not necessarily like seeing the patient in person is the solution uh, to every single single uh, case, uh, single central case. So enjoy this video. You're basically of your, no worries. Of your smile. Go ahead and smile for me. Good. You kind of want me to do all angles. And then open slightly.